What is up? Guys, I've been I was just doing a live stream with uh with Rich from Hellabass. Debo got to be on there. It was a good time. We had a good time talking, hanging out. Hopefully we're live now. I see Budget Bassin in there. Big baits, big fish. Big baits, big bites. That's what I say. Big baits, big bites. Christian, what is happening? Oh, yeah. Let's go. We're going to be talking about big baits, equipment. I want to answer a lot of questions tonight. I've been getting a lot of questions. I want to answer a lot of questions. So, Martin, what's happening? Anthony, how you doing? Kyle, what's up? Chloe, how you doing? Fish in the Southeast. What's up, dude? I'm good. I'm good. Guys, I've been having a really good time. Fishing is heating up here. Frog fishing. I've been catching them on frogs, and it doesn't, it doesn't get much better than that for me. Been catching them on frogs. Um, got a video coming out pretty soon. I say pretty soon. I've obviously been really slacking on videos. Really slacking on videos for you guys, and I apologize for that. Just a whole lot of whole lot of other stuff being a little more important. Being family. Family, very important. So yo, Bobby, Bobino. Gotta learn about this bass eat bass kind of life you live in. That's a fact, dude. That's a fact. Al, how you doing? Jeremy, what's up? Todd, good seeing you, dude. Yes. <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, I'm catching a lot on frogs. Um, got on my first glide bait fish. But I feel like we've talked about big baits so much in the lives, and I've had a lot of comments about it that – even though I don't have the most extensive knowledge and experience, I'd like to, you know, say that I do know a little bit, not just from my own personal experience, but from experience of working with guys that do throw a lot of big baits, fishing with them, learning from them, and hopefully being able to answer some questions for you guys. Talk a little bit about that. Um, fishing Southeast, I got an eight pound bass not too long ago. Heck yeah. He's got it on his channel. Um, okay, so Martin said, if I can only afford one type of rod and reel and a few baits for down south, for down south Texas, Houston, what should I get? One type of rod and reel. Dude, in Texas, if you're asking me, it's going to be anything for topwater. Um, a lot of topwater rigs you can use for jigs and Texas rigs as well. Um, for my topwater, when it comes to frogging, I am a huge proponent of seven foot, seven two heavies, um, real seven to eight gear, nothing faster, nothing slower, and braid all day, all day. <laughs> protein, golly, freaking protein video. That was that was awesome. Um, SLX combo about two hundred bucks. That's a good one, Jeremy. Very good one indeed. Let's see here. James, what's happening? Falcon Amistad for Texas. Okay, Walt, good feedback there. Anthony, let's see here. I'm here for the hang. I don't have big baits. The only big baits I have are like most are like some five inch rage swimmers. Dude, yeah. S Waver 168. Solid. Solid freaking glide bait. And that's one of those baits that you don't necessarily need you know, spe like specialty equipment for, um, you know, you don't have to have those bigger reels. You don't, I mean, you probably want to throw it on some heavier line, but you know, a 150 size reel can handle an S waiver 168 just fine. Um, I made the mistake when I first got my first big swim bait, it was sent to me and it was a 316 um, freestyle shad. And I was so excited about it. I spooled up, you know, some – I don't even think I spooled up heavier line. I threw it on conventional reel and line, and that thing was so heavy that spool couldn't keep up. The line bit into the spool, and it snapped and flew off. And I don't want people making the uh, the same mistakes that, that I did 
when it comes to that. So let's see. Budget Bassin said Bullgill versus Glide Bait. I mean, technically they're both they're both a glide bait. Like, I mean, I've they're the bullgill is a single joint swim bait, which is technically a glide bait. That's a that's a hard one. Shin, yeah, dude. We got some tornadoes. I mean, it's it's typical for here. Crazy weather. It's been raining a whole lot. Um, but yeah, appreciate it, man. We are we are good. Brian, good to see you. Martin said, I'm trying to start a high school fishing team next year. Anything I need to know before I get into it. I'm not the I I I would not know anything about starting that up, man. I, I really wish I could help you out there, but I I'm not even gonna play like I know. Not even gonna play like that. So um yeah, I I can't even think of the first person that I would say to reach out to. So James, yeah, me and uh, me and all Oki and Shrek, you know, I've been trying to get him over here. The only time I can ever see him is if we're just going to go fishing, but he doesn't come over and hang out anymore. So you'll have to message him and let him know to come over. Samuel, good to see you, dude. Guys, first off, I have got to apologize to the people for the giveaway that I have not sent anything out to yet. Again, it's just been... It's been wild, and I've got it all sitting here. It's all safe. It will be coming your way. Uh, I apologize. Just a whole lot of whole lot of family stuff, which a lot of things are getting better, which is also why I'm here tonight doing a live stream, working on some videos. Um, I got a fun video. My buddy Jacob came up from Wichita. We went fishing, had a good time out there. Um Steve, the OK Fisherman, guys, he caught an absolute monster. And I'm not going to share much more than that. Even in my video, I'm going to share a short clip of the catch. But it's really just so you guys can head over to his channel, subscribe. Um, it is the OK Fisherman. That's uh, Steve, our buddy Steve. Um, had a killer weekend, killer weekend with him. So let's see here. Al said, S. Waver and Gantrell have been killing it here in Philadelphia. Where was the best entry glide? I think the S waiver is one of the best entry glides. I think the antidote from uh, Bait Sanity is another really good one too. Um, there are some really good entry level swim baits, glide baits out there. Like I made the mistake thinking that getting the Mega Bass Ice Slide 135 would be a good one. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I would not recommend it. It's just, it's a little too small. I think that if you're going to spend that money, then you can get a little bigger of a glide, a little decent of a glide. But that is the 135. If you guys have ever looked at them on Tackle Warehouse and want to know the size of these things in comparison to something, um, this is, here's a good comparison for you. That's about the size of an S waiver. So an S waiver to the 135. Mega Bass I slide right there. So I think the uh, I think the antidote is a great a great glide, great entry level one. Only thing that I don't like about the antidote though is it does have those texture scales and sometimes those hooks when you're making those casts, that hook point can get caught in those scales. So be very be as aware as you can be if you do have that to how it's swimming. If you can tell, if you can feel it's not swimming right, just burn it back in, fix that hook, and bomb it back out there again. So, um, bu -bu -bu. boat is almost ready. Boat is almost ready, Todd. We just got to get her running. Is all. Just got a little bit of a little bit of motor issues. Is all it is. Um. Okay, I'm trying to catch up here. Brad Taylor, how you doing? Be easy. Good to see you. Mike, fish arrow stuff. So the only fish arrow stuff that I have is the riser jack, and I like it. The riser jack was actually a uh, collaboration between DRT and fish arrow. Um, so DRT weight tuned this bait. They put the lip in there. They put the tail in there. 
and it is a uh, it's a crank down. I if you guys want to see a trash or pass on it, let me know. Um, but that is the only fish arrow stuff that I've got. So Jeremy, you might be right. What about the Guggen bait thingy? Which one there? I don't know what we're talking about. The contender. Let's. I'm just gonna jump into this, guys. So we're gonna talk about different baits that are okay, in my opinion, to be throwing on conventional or you know up to like 7-Eleven rated up to two ounce rod and a 200 size reel. This is one of them. This is the Guggen Squad Contender. This is a seven inch swim bait. This is one that you can 100% throw, you know, on a one to two ounce. I mean, I wouldn't say one ounce because some rods are rated differently. You know, they're different powers. Um, but you got a two ounce rod or two ounce rating on a rod. This is one that you can throw on a 150 to a 200 size spool. No issue whatsoever. The hooks on there are not extremely thick by any means. So... If you're throwing it on a rod that's, you know, rated up to two ounces, it's going to have enough backbone to get those hooks in there. So I think one of the big misconceptions that I used to have when it came to big baits is I would look at my rod and be like, okay, so it can handle two ounces or it can handle three ounces. And that bait right there is like two and a half ounces. But say that it is a battle shed and you've got, an owner beast hook in there, which is, you know, a 10 to 12 watt beast hook. You need to have not only a rod that can handle the weight of that lure, but you need to have a rod that is going to be strong enough to put that hook deep enough into that fish's mouth to where they're going to be pinned. That was one thing that I did wrong starting out is I, uh, and it wasn't even a swim bait. I was throwing a, throwing 11 inch worm, and I was throwing an 11 aught worm hook from owner, and I was throwing it on a heavy power rod. But that heavy power rod did not have enough backbone to stick that hook. And that was one of those things that was just kind of like an eye opener for me is like an aha moment. Like, oh crap. I mean, that's that's something that I need to pay attention to. Is like if I'm gonna be throwing this, even though that rod is maybe overpowering on the weight of that lure, you got to think about the actual gauge and the size of that hook that you're going to be trying to push in there and penetrate into that fish's mouth. That's a that's a big thing. Um, so like on a lot of those treble hook baits, your glides, your top waters, anything like that, be aware of the gauge of hook, the size of hook, and make sure that you've got a rod that can actually handle you know, getting those fish pinned with those sizes of hooks. That's a, that's a big thing to take into account. Let's see if we can catch up here. Hello, Bass here for the Flex Show. Oh, man. Have you ever tried the Savage Gear Shine Glider? No, I have not. Not yet. Um, Patrick, what's up, dude? Joe, good to see you. Could you maybe swap hooks to mustache short shank hooks? Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about the antidote. Yeah. You can absolutely do that. And I, I probably should do that. I just don't throw the antidote enough. Um, let's see here. Is it hard to fish with a smaller glide because of the action? Yeah. It's just, it's a very, it's a very fine, it's a very lightweight bait. It just, I didn't feel like, and maybe my line was too heavy on this. I just did not feel that this had a very good glide. To it. it seemed to roll more than anything. And I, I assume you're talking about, you know, the I slide 135, but it seemed to roll to its side more than actually glide. I could have been doing it too fast. The guy I was fishing with, he may have been moving too fast for it. But again, talking about price, bang for the buck. You guys know I love Mega Bass stuff, but there are some things from them that I just I wouldn't really recommend them. But you know, back onto the whole swim bait conversation. Um, oh man, let me try and get caught up here. I'm trying to see here. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy. Yep. Um, 
Todd said, I was looking at the Falcon Buku Super Duty as an entry-level swim bait rod. Try them out. Rated half to three ounces. Yeah, Todd, I think that's I think that's absolutely solid. You know, if you're going to be sitting around, you know, glide baits or, you know, baits that are going to be a smaller jig hook um, or treble hook baits, I think that's perfect. You know, if you're like throw like a Beast Coast Creep, which is like a six and a half ounce or six and a half inch bait, but it does require an ADOT. I think it's an ADOT on these guys. I want you to throw an ADOT Beast Hook on those guys right there. That rod is going to have enough backbone, enough power in it for that ADOT Beast Hook. Um, check that one rigged up right there. So again, bigger hook, but I mean, not a whole lot of meat behind it and throwing a rod that's going to you know, be around three ounces at the, at the top, that's going to be perfect for one of those guys right there. Um, swim baits that you don't need that you could throw on, you know, your regular jig rod, you could throw on, you know, a medium heavy, even the Beast Coast Miyagi. I don't know if you guys have seen these. That's just a six aught beast hook. And they've got, you know, the belly the belly slit in there so that weight slides right up. And that hook is going to be perfect for that. But these that's one of those swim baits that you can throw and you can get into, you know, swim baits and be throwing swim baits, especially with post-spawn coming up or throwing, you know, a weedless swim bait like that onto a bed if you are trying to sight fish, if you are, you know, trying to fish the spawn, stuff like this is going to be perfect for that. And that's something that you don't need specialty equipment for. Um, talking about reels. One of the big things, I think I'm just going to try and go on a spiel here for a little bit, and then I'm going to get caught up on comments and try and answer questions as we go along. Um, talking about reels, you know, like just because you have that heavier rod, throwing it on a 150 size reel, even though you can comfortably throw it on that 150 size reel, you have to think about the impact that, that reel is getting inside the mechanics of that reel is a lot of those, you know, smaller, more compact reels, those 150 size, they don't have that beefed up gearing. That's why it's not so much about the size of spool for me, you know, like I have the Alexa 300 right here. And it's not so much the size of the spool. I would, I've got, you know, it's a tool with 200. And they've got, you know, the beefier gearing in the Lexus and the Corrado 300s that is going to be able to handle when those bigger baits are being thrown and, you know, bringing them back in. You've got to have a reel that is going to be able to withstand that kind of pressure not only of the lure, but if you do hook up, but of that fish fighting against that as well. Um, you know, you diminish the life of your reel if you're throwing heavier baits and stuff like that on a lighter reel, like a one, 150 size reel or smaller. Um, so I like when I'm throwing the heavier stuff, 200 and up. That's the biggest I've got is like 300. I don't have any 400 size reels. Don't have any of that stuff. Okay, let's see here. Trying to catch up here. Um, so, hello, Baz. What's up, Huntsman? How you doing, dude? Good to see you. Do you think the SLX on a Falcon Lowrider 7.2 way to run the half? An S waiver or a six inch mag draft? Yeah. I think so. I think an SLX would be all right, especially like just a six inch mag draft. 100%. I think you'd be okay. Patrick, my favorite glide bait. Dude, right now it's just, it's got to be the fact that, you know, I just caught one on it, but it is the, uh, the Buka Shad glide. That is got to be my favorite glide bait. Um, I've been putting a little more time in with this lately, but this, as far as a glide bait, goes like i said it's, it's the first one that i ever had to or the first one i ever caught a fish on as far as glide baits go and i've got a lot and i've thrown a lot this is the one that i actually got i've got a fish logged on now one thing that i talked about over on hellabass's stream and this might be very um, controversial when it comes to the swim bait guys is you know 
the 250, the depth 250 is like the standard. The depth 250 is the standard for glide baits. It has been for a long freaking time, but the depth 250 is not cheap. It is very expensive. So I think there's one out there that I've seen them swim side by side, and I think they're very comparable, and it's about half the price, and that's the Bait Sanity Explorer Gen 2. This thing swims almost identical to a Depths 250, and again, it's about half the price. I, I want to say these guys are like 70 bucks, maybe. Um, you can get different tails for them. You can get uh, kind of customize them that way. Paint scheme on them is great. They're not going to be that same, uh, that plastic material as the, as the Depths 250. But when we're just talking about swim and action of a glide bait, the standard is the 250, but the Bait Sanity Explorer Gen 2 is, my opinion, it's right up there. It's very comparable. Now that's one of those baits that you're going to have to have some specialty equipment for. You're going to want a heavier rod. You're going to want a heavier reel. Um, the line I've been throwing them on is either 25-pound tactical, floor, P-line tactical, or 25-pound CXX. Any of my topwater stuff, I'm throwing a 65-pound uh, braid. That's what I'm going to be throwing on. Um, let me see here. Try and get caught up. Let's see. Um, okay, pond fish and swim baits and glide baits. I would rather fish a swim bait than a glide bait when I'm fishing ponds. Um, I just feel like I've got a little more control over a multi-jointed swim bait rather than a glide bait when I'm fishing ponds. So that, that's me personally. Hi, Leanne. Good evening to you. Um, <laughs> James. You want to pay for the shipping, bro. I might as well just ship it to you because it's it's sitting around not doing anything for me. Um, what is the bait on? So Michael was asking. Oh, the bait on my rod. That was probably when I was showing this. This is a uh, evergreen timber flash. Evergreen timber flash, kind of like noisy docks. It is a wake bait that you can crank down. The big, well, not really big, but a boot tail on there and quad hooks and uh yeah i've caught them on this and this was a gift to me from chris and i love i love this bait i love you guys watch me at all you know i love wake baits and i love top water anything about that but that is the evergreen timber flash like i said it's very similar to the noisy docks very loud baits very clacky that's the noisy dock right there But if Rich is in here, I'm just I'm not trying to do a flex show. Um. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, it, it just that's one that it was just a little too it was a little too fragile for me. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, what's up, Gabe? Ten Horse Monty in the house. Fishing the Lone Star. Good seeing you, dude. Let's see here. Oh, KGB. Yeah, that's... Yep. KGBs are like the legends. Those are... Oh, I would love, love to get my hands on one of those someday. Those are sick. Um, so asking if I drove the Tulsa... To get the Buka Shad, I live right outside of Tulsa. I live in Bigsby. I'm. It was a ten minute drive for me to go to that show, but yeah, that's where I got it. I got it, you know, during that winter storm that we had here, and Mike was stuck here for a couple of days. But yeah, I drove to the show and picked that up, and was able to hang on to. There was only two of them left. I was able to hang on to one of them for Steve and get him that last one. So. No, uh, Patrick, the Storm Arashi, I have not. Maybe I have thrown it. I think the Arashi, that was one that I was going to say is very comparable to the S waiver. That is a great, that's another great entry level swim or glide bait. Um, 
I do, I do specify the two. I, I kind of, I kind of separate the two from glide baits to swim baits. They are different enough in my mind to where I'm going to split the two up. I'm not going to call a glide bait, you know, an actual swim bait. That's why when you asked earlier about, you know, glide bait or swim bait in ponds, I like multi-jointed swim baits rather than a glide bait when I'm fishing ponds. Let's see here. What did what did he say? Sean, how you doing? El Ray, what's up, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, James, get in touch with me on uh, on Instagram, and I'll let you know. Decentralized thoughts on the Guggen Squad contender. I've actually got a. Uh, <laughs> Not flexing, bro. <laughs> I got a trasher pass. Uh, I saw Shannon Shannon Kirby was talking about that, saying he misses the the trasher pass. Uh, I've got a trasher pass coming out on that, so I will give you guys my opinion on the Guggen Squad contender. I've only got the contender. I don't have the junior, um, but I will give you guys my thoughts on that and that one for sure. Hey, son. I see Oki's in here. Um, when the top of a soft swim bait gets beat up from skin hooking, can you fix that with mend it? Yes, 100%. I think you can. Um, me personally, most of my soft swim baits are multi-packed. So I'll usually just, if the top is getting beat up, usually the nose is by that point too, using the screw lock hook. So usually I'll, uh, toss them aside and put on a new one. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough luck on those just yet to really kind of be dealing with a whole lot of that issue, though. <laughs> so, um, Timber Flash Junior. I don't think I don't know if it's the Junior man. I really do not know that. That's a good question. Like I said, it was a uh, a gift to me. So, yeah, three sixteen lure company. Yeah, do the Rising Sun is amazing. Rising Sun is absolutely incredible. Um, the minnows from him as well. Um, that was another thing that we were talking about over on uh, Rich's channel, talking about like the Dream Smasher on the six inch weed list. That's one of those baits that kind of like I was talking about with the Miyagi that you could throw on your conventional your conventional gear that you don't necessarily need to go out. And I think what kind of sparked this is I had a lot of guys asking. You know, I'm wanting to get into swim baits. I want to get into this stuff, but I don't want to, you know, like uh, like me personally. I thought a six-inch mag draft was big when I first kind of got into this stuff. And I was like, I don't want to go with anything bigger. I don't want to have to get, you know, a dedicated setup or anything like that. And there's so many baits out there that you don't have to. You don't have to go get a swim bait rod. You don't have to go out and get a 300-size reel. Um you, you don't have to do that stuff if you still want to throw swim baits. But as a cautionary tale, if you are trying to get into swim baits, I would say run the other way. Just start running. Just sprint the other way because it's a whole another black hole that will suck your money completely away and will drive you insane. So if you're looking to get into swim baits, just, just run. Run the other way. Don't even do it. Don't even look into it. Yeah, Oki's got the Arashi. Um, now you guys can kind of see like just how far, just how far back behind I am here on these comments. <laughs> Fish naked. Show off your bobbers. Um, Ian at, or Ian asked, "What is?" I said, "I am because I was thinking O'Connell." Um, Ian asked, "What is my favorite big bait?" Um. Dude, favorite big bait would probably be just for the fact that I've thrown them and I have a ton of fun with them is going to be any of my rats. Um, those are probably my favorite big baits. Those are ones that I just absolutely love to throw. Um, Buka soft tail is another one. that's a lot of fun to throw pretty much anything that is going to be top of the water column when it comes to a big bait is going to be my favorite. I can't sit there and say like, I have one favorite over the other. Um, Oki, if I'm wrong right now, then just text me and tell me if I'm completely forgetting a 
a big bait that I love more than others. So let's see here. I'm not I'm not giving any spoilers on that, Rich. No spoilers at all. Let's see here. Huntsman. <laughs> David has one to destroy Yak Pack. I that dude is off my radar. Um Sean asks, how do I like the Buka Wake? The soft tail, the Buka soft tail. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. That's another trash or pass that's coming out. Which I mean, I don't think that you could ever. I don't think a, a trash or pass is right to do for any kind of buka bait. They're they're all gonna they're all gonna pass. They're all great. Um, but I yeah, I love that bait. That soft tail is killer. Um, the wake action on it is insane. Even with that humongous bill on the front or that humongous lip, whatever you want to call it, on the front, being able to crank that thing down and burn it and it does not blow out. It's I absolutely love it. <laughs> Lone Star. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. What about the Academy brand swim baits? I think the brand is H2O. Dude, I've, I've thrown a lot of those. Um, I think I've actually got some. Those little multi-jointed swim baits, those little gills, I think they're great. I think they're awesome. That's one of those baits that, you know, if you want to get into swim, swim baits and kind of learn a little bit about them, that's the way to do it. Um, you know, especially like if you're beating the banks, you're not out on a boat, you're running the risk of getting something snagged up. Um, start off with something, you know, inexpensive like that to where if you do lose it, it's not as big of a deal as, say, snagging and breaking off a $30 to $40 swim bait. I, yeah, I 100%. Um, <laughs> man, I can't get, I can't get over this with Rich right now. David, appreciate that, man. Get half a monster. <laughs> oh, man. Baby Bull Gill, what's my opinion? Dude, I just did a, uh, just did a trash pass on that, on the Baby Bull Gill. I love it. I think it's a killer, killer little bait. Um, you know, the fact that it's modeled after the Buka baits, whether he had a hand in it or not. I mean, he obviously had some kind of hand in it because, you know, they were able to kind of model it after like his other ones. I think it's killer. I think it's awesome. Um, that's one of those little baits that you can really just burn and kill it, you know, work a steady retrieve with it incorporate some handle pumps to get it kind of kicking like that and then just kill it and let it die and then pick it right back up. I think it's a great, a great little bit, uh, swim bait. Let's see. Still doing Bob. Yes. As soon as I get one. Yep. The hybrid hunter will still be coming out. <laughs> SoCal. What's up, dude? Guys, SoCal fishing, dude. This is the guy that sent me the, uh, the battle shad right there. And that's kind of like what he said right there. Go big or go home, throw those hundred dollars swim baits. That's, you know, him and Steve, it's just that big bait guy mentality. It's literally, it's already spent, you know, and it's kind of one, you get to that point where it's already spent. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Just go out there and throw it, throw it, go bang it off to something Hook a fish, don't hook a fish, whatever it may be. But, yeah, that big bait mentality, that's – I've been pretty fortunate to be around enough guys to where I've had a lot of fun with that and kind of getting that same thing. Baby Bullgill is, dude. Is the Mega Dog behind me any good? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. The Mega Dog behind me is a freaking workout. Just because it's in the package doesn't mean it hasn't been thrown. I've thrown that thing. I'm just kind of OCD and I like to kind of keep things nice. So I try and keep the packages for as much stuff as possible and just put them right back in there after they've dried off and put them right back in. But, yeah, it's a freaking workout to hook that thing. Not only just to cast it, but to work this size of a spook. 
it, it will just, it will wear you out. This might be as far as looks go and the style. This is one of my top 10 favorite baits. The Mega Dog hook hangers, swiveling hook hangers, saltwater okay hooks. It's just, it is a, a big, big beefy bait. 220 millimeter bait. But it, yeah, it's a freaking workout. But the walk on this thing is insane. The amount of kick that it just kicks out to the side, the glide on it is is so wild. But I absolutely love that bait. And it's almost time. It is almost time. Like we're getting on the frogging bite right now. Um, the frogging bite's there, but that open water, top water bite is not quite here yet. It's like right on the cusp right on the freaking cusp but yeah that's definitely another one of those one of those baits that you have to have that uh specialty equipment for first time i threw my baby bull gill five pounder swallowed it yes i mean those little those little swim baits they're just i mean they're bite size they're the perfect size for really any any size bass to get and they just see an easy little meal that they're not going to have to expend a whole lot of energy on to kill that and eat that thing. And catching a five pounder, that's man. I don't know what you guys think about like the threshold for big fish, big bass. I would have to argue, you know, between four and a half, five pounds. Like that's like the threshold for a big bass. I think that is right there. <coughs> man, I've been doing so much talking tonight with Rich. Oh, expensive swim baits are no different than my wife's Lulu addiction. <laughs> Big facts, dude. And thank you for that, Rich. Appreciate that, man. Fish the Mega Dog for GTs. Dude, where do you think I live? Yo, the Mega Dog is sick, Tim. I really do like it, man. I really do. Um, Okay, let me see here. Let me catch up here. Fish Visions, new here. Welcome in, man. Welcome in. Yes, I have seen the manifold glide baits on Tackle Warehouse. I've seen them on the hookup tackle. I've seen the manifolds. And, yeah, they've got that one. It's funny because me and Rich, hella bass, we were talking about those. <coughs> that one in particular being like 43 ounces. It's 1200 bucks, And it's, it's one of those things that, you know, when the swim baiters, it's, it's kind of like a collector's item. You know, if anyone's, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are able to afford that and would just have no problem going out there and blowing the money on that. I would definitely not. Would definitely not. Um, okay. What about the BD Shads? The BD Shads are awesome. BD Shad is right up there. That is for, I mean, lack of better term, what I called it myself when I got it was a poor man's bull gill or bull shad. Um, the BD shads are, yeah, they're great. They're one that you can definitely burn. You can work it on a slower, steady retrieve, kill it. And they kick out. Um, you guys know, like I love the gee crack, the gee crack, um, gilling 125. That's another one. Um, I got a couple other multi-jointed swim baits. I need to get out there and do some episodes for you guys. Um, so Brad said, I got a feel-free 103 pedal kayak. Do you know anything about those? I don't know anything about those. I had the uh, Big Fish 105, though, and essentially the same platform as the 103, and that is a, well, I mean, it's extremely stable. That thing is, it's a boat. It's a freaking boat that you can stand and you can fish out of, and yeah, extremely stable. May not be the fastest, but they are pretty nimble. So even with the pedal system in there, you're going to be a lot faster than paddling, but they are, they do have, you know, a very good turn radius. And again, for me, it was more so about being nimble and something I could stand comfortably in and not have any issues with. I loved it. I think that was, I thought that was great. Oh. Um, Now we're going to talk a little bit about rods 
and the difference between powers and actions and all this other stuff when it comes to rods. Because that's another thing that was always really weird for me is, you know, like you would see a rod and it would have the power on there. Like this is an iRod Genesis 2 and it's the large swim and it's 794 heavy. It's seven nine foot or seven nine rod, heavy power, but it was rated at a moderate action. And I was like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you want a moderate action? Well, in the power, like in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to rods themselves, swim bait rods, these are just so much heavier than your conventional rods. I mean, this is that's the moderate right there, but this thing is stiff. So that large swim is actually rated four to 10 ounces. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's backwards and upside down. That's, that's really helpful. Oh, just turn upside down on your head and then flip it backwards. Yeah, anyways, four to 10 ounces. This is a rod that I use for heavy jig hooks. Like the exposed jig hooks, the heavier huds, um, the Savage Gears, the anything like that, like the Savage Gear right there with an exposed jig hook. I want a heavier, I want a stiffer rod for the exposed jig hooks. Then when it comes to, say like the treble hook. So this is the 13 Defy Black swim bait rod, budget friendly. It's like 90 bucks, um, four to eight ounces, heavy power, fast. Even though it's a fast, I want you guys to see the action of this rod in comparison to that I rod and just see how much more give there is in this, especially with the weight rating. If we can get that, if I can get this thing in frame here without knocking a whole bunch of other stuff over and breaking stuff, whatever, this is a sh show. It's got a whole lot more give so it's going to have more of a load to it for those treble hook baits. So I think the Defy Black, or yeah, I think it's the Defy from 13 Fishing. I've seen a lot of guys talk bad about this rod. I think this rod's great. I think it's a great entry-level swim bait rod, um, especially, you know, if you're getting into a glide bait, something like that, you know, a multi-jointed swim bait, anything with treble hooks, I think it's going to be absolutely killer for that it's a great rod um i've got the f5 ghost code which is a moderate so this is a moderate action and this guy right here is a very soft tip but about a uh, third of the way down on that rod it just it stops so it's got a whole lot of load to it that's why i'm throwing braid and top waters on this rod right here because it's going to load for those top waters. You're going to have those fish, you know, a lot of the time trying to shake that stuff since you caught them up top anyways. And that's why I keep this guy more so for the top waters. Um, Steve, however, he loves that for glide baits. Again, treble hooks, it's going to load better. It's going to move with that fish when they're thrashing against that. So, Different stuff to take into account when you're looking at swim bait rods. Let's see here. Spro Rat. Yeah, Spro Rat is solid. No, I have not seen a Golden Swim Bait Gremlin Glide. I have not. I would love to see that, though. I'm going to have to look them up. Um, okay. Never hang my head in shame over four or five pounder. Yep. 100%. I just, I think that is like the, I think that's kind of like the, the gatekeeper for big fish standard is four to five. If you ask me personally, Talon, he said the Oklahoma bite is tough right now. Dude, Talon, I've been getting on frogs, man. Like I've been frogs, the glide bait, swim baits, um, Texas rig plastics. It's, it's not been tough for us. I don't know where you're at though. Um, here, you know, Tulsa area and going down south, a little bit of warmer water. It's been great. 
Let's see here. <clears throat> I think I'd rather buy a live scope over a manifold. 100%. 100%. Thoughts on the mag draft? Dude, Gabe, I think, like Rich said, you know, I think the mag draft is great. I think it's a solid, solid swim bait. I think it's a great entry level, you know, into swim baiting and kind of learning that. Um, it's one of those that you definitely – you can't burn them quite as much, but they are just a whole lot of fun. And they do get bit. They get bit like crazy. Yeah, Tim, addicted to the big baits lately, and it can definitely get expensive. 100%. 100%. Throw the 6-inch and 8-inch bull shad. The 8-inch bull shad is a big freaking bait, too. And that's a solid bait. Let's see here. How would you fish the baby bull gill around lots of grass? <clears throat> what I'm going to do with that around lots of grass, any kind of patch, um, I'm going to do a slow, steady retrieve handle pump for burning it across the grass. If I come over a patch that is open, I'm going to kill it and just let it fall and then pick that rod tip up and do the same thing. Dobbins guy all the way with the big baits. Yeah, Dobbins are solid. I like to, when it comes to the big bait rods, I've liked having an array of different rods, you know, because I'm not tied down to a company when it comes to the big baits. So I'd like to kind of get a feel for them. I've thrown the Champions. I've thrown the Furies. I think they're all great. Um, but me, I just kind of worked in that, uh, that kind of budget range for a little while. Let's see here. John Long said, trying to decide on which swim bait rod to get between 7-Eleven Heavy 1 to 3 or 7-Eleven Extra Heavy 4 to 10, both moderate. John, it would really depend on what you're throwing, man. That 4 to 10 moderate, if you're talking about the eye rod, that is a very stiff, very heavy rod. Very, very heavy. Um, probably a little too heavy for a glide bait anything with treble hooks so me personally i think that 7-eleven one to three is going to be a little more um diverse in what kind of baits you want to throw that's what i would say but again i don't know what you're throwing on them so that's just kind of my initial thoughts on those Jeremy, appreciate that. Y'all go smash that like button for me. We got 38 people in here, 29 thumbs up. I appreciate that. Started out with a couple of 806 Furies and three. Oh, yeah. Cardiff. That is awesome. What's up, Lip Ripper? Good seeing you, dude. Um, Husband got a Pro Qualifier 2 from Bass Pro. Cheap entry level rod. Real. Yep. That's a, uh, Yeah. No, that's, that's a great one, especially, you know, for those, you know, smaller, I say smaller. Again, like when I'm talking about like smaller swim baits, guys, you got to remember like the smaller for me as far as standard now is like six inch and below. But that used to be a bigger bait for me. So when you've got guys that are throwing a lot of swim baits and they're talking about like small baits, don't let that kind of like, I don't know offend you make you think anything differently because you're just getting into it like the miyagi would have been a very comfortable entry level swim bait for me 100 percent. but now i mean it's it's kind of like to me it's like a texas rig plastic at this point so i keep holding this guy up that's that 13 fishing bma or bamf you know what it is the it's like the poor man's citizen is what it is, but that is a great plastic swim bait, um, soft body, fairly inexpensive, definitely not as durable as the higher price ones, but it is a great entry level one if you want to get into that. That's a 12 lot. You got to run a 12 lot beast hook on that. So again, that kind of comes down to, even though it's a fairly cheap swim bait, you need to have the right equipment to throw that thing because of that hook on there. I 
don't know what the wife is cooking, but it smells good. She's got me hungry on here. Um, head case, what's up, dude? Rod sizing should be should just be generalized or self sized. Yeah, man, it's it's tough. It's tough because I mean, so many different rod companies use a different kind of blank, you know, or even though it's like I said, rated at a moderate, that's a moderate for four to 10 ounce baits. Um, you know, and like there's some rods that even though they're rated up to eight ounces, I wouldn't throw an eight ounce bait on it. Like I, I would be, I feel like I would be pushing it at a six ounce bait on some of those rods with the way that they load. It just doesn't feel like enough and I'm not getting, you know, enough of that load on the back cast to get the maximum distance out of some of those rods. So let's see here. One of the 806s I've used, Corrado 300. Oh, dude. My father-in-law, Tim, you're talking like my father-in-law's got probably 12 of the Corrado 200s. Those things are absolute tanks. Those those are reels that, you know, you just take care of them and they they last forever. Matthew said, I love my 300 duty, or Super Duty Luz. Yeah. Yep. 300 Super Duty, that is a great, great swim bait, like a heavy bait reel. Heavy bait reel. No, it's all good. Ducket, the wheeler rods are his favorite for Patrick. Nice, dude. I've actually never thrown a ducket. I've never even thrown a ducket before. Got a lot of buddies with them. Um, you guys know, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm partnered up with Halo. So all of my conventional rods are Halo rods. Um, you know, made the switch over from favorite to them and liking them a whole lot. They are, there was really only one, one rod from favorite that I felt like was the probably truest to the power rating and the weight rating. And that was anything from the big sexy line. That was one that I felt like was the most true to a power rating from them. Um, whereas the halos, I feel like all of them are, are spot on with my experience and what I've been throwing. But now I have some of the, so just starting out, starting down the rabbit hole, John, just be prepared, man. Be prepared. But now just have some six inch on the larger size. Yep. Um, still using any of the favorite reels? No, I am not. Sold all of them. Let's see here. Still throw the six inch bull shad on 795. Yep. I think that's perfect. I think that is perfect. Uh, let's see here. Man Outdoors just ordered a Spiral Light 7.6. Heck yeah. You very fast. Got a lot of glide baits and swim bait, but not too many. Yeah. Glide bait, the glide bait bite is very different. I, I would prefer to throw a multi-jointed swim bait over a glide bait personally. I just feel like I've got more control. I think I've said that already. I'm kind of repeating myself. Let's see here. Digital Wells, what's up, dude? God, that guy, Digital Wells, you want to talk about like camera guy goals. That guy is a freaking wizard with the stuff that he can do behind the camera. Insane. Um, ask me if I'm doing anything from the new canoe. No, man, I actually sold the new canoe. I sold the kayak, and it was to fund finishing my boat. I've got a little uh, 15 and a half foot glass boat that I'm finishing up that I will do a video on once we get it on the water, get her running. Um, I sold that a while back, and then uh, some life stuff kind of happened, and instead of that going to the boat, it kind of came back and helped out here. So... But I did throw, I did do some swim baiting from the new canoe. I never hooked up, but I threw a rigs from it. That pursuit, um, I threw some bigger glides, some bigger swims from it. Never had any issue with it. So, what's up, Oki Twelve? Sean in the house. Good to see you, dude. Um, let's see here, Lip Ripper. Yeah, HFX is legit legit <clears throat> i've been 
I've been hammering them on the frog on that 7.2 KS2 Elite, that 7.2 Heavy fast. I've been hammering them on that. And that's that was the one rod because, you know, that big sexy from favorite was my favorite frogging rod. And that was the rod when I picked that one up. I was hoping that that would be comparable, and it, it is. It's absolutely solid. <laughs> Phasing out the six kill mistake. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> go-to color and bait for spawn bit spawn fishing and dead trees Derek you know I think a lot of guys I, I I say a lot of guys I can't really assume me for like any kind of bed or spawn fishing I'm gonna go more natural colors um I like to throw a rage bug on beds if I can get even a smaller profile I think a smaller profile is going to be even better because a lot of the time they're just going to pick that up just to move it. So the smaller profile that you can get a lot of the time, you're going to have a better hookup ratio, like a Ned rig. I think a Ned rig on a bed is, I think it's ideal. How do you fish your glide baits and jointed swim baits? Um, so the glide bait Patrick, I got a video coming out that I'm going to be putting out about that. I didn't know much about the glide bait. You know, I'd thrown them plenty of times, never really had any kind of luck with it until just recently. And it was one of those things when I did hook up, I couldn't remember what I was doing. And once I got home, I went back and watched how I was using that retrieve on the glide bait. And it was a lot of, you know, just a constant. I didn't really move the rod at all. I didn't use the rod to get that kick. I used a real pump. A handle pump to get that thing to really kick out like that and then just pick it back up and then i work kind of like a swim bait um but not near as erratic is what it was but what i noticed is when i would do those real pumps and then kill it and then pick it back up with one more that's usually when i would trigger that bite but on swim baits on multi-jointed swim baits that is when i do a whole lot of burning and killing a whole lot of that a whole lot of you know quick burning retrieves and killing it and again that came a lot from steve the okay fisherman tell me about that stuff let's see here glide bait to me yeah fish like a fluke yep um, but again, like I'm, I'm not big on, I don't do a whole lot of rod movement when it comes to the glide baits. Don't do a whole lot of that. Yeah. Big sexy is just, that's, that is a solid rod. I think that is probably the best lineup from favorite when it comes to the rods from them. I think the big sexy is the best lineup they've got. Um, PB on a swim bait. George asked me. Um, I would consider, I mean, and like swim baiters, you know, <laughs> swim bait universe, Facebook group, they do consider a rat swim bait. So on the Spro 50, this guy right here, I caught, I mean, I can only estimate what her weight was and she was between seven, three quarter, maybe eight pounds. Um, in fact, I'll just pull up that picture. I'm sitting here trying to read some of these comments. But yeah, she was a uh, seven three quarter, eight pounds, about 23 inches, tw a hair over 23 inches is what she was. And that was out of a, a little strip pond. It was uh, one of those crazy things that it was kind of like last cast and she blew it up and I missed her and I made the same cast again. And she came back for it again. So, hope you guys can see that right there. That was her, and that's what the rat still in her mouth right there. So, that is my PB on a swim bait. But PB is on a frog. Let's see here. Only thing I've had luck with lately is a good old jerk bait and the jabber jaw. Okay. Glide bait versus wake bait. When do you use them? 
me personally, I think I think it comes down to personal preference. Like I I would love I love a wake bait. I'm just a top water fanatic. So, but wake bait in the morning time and when the sun is high and I'm fishing thick grass, I'm going to throw a wake bait over that stuff because a lot of the time they're going to be in that thick grass. They're going to be hunkered down and especially grass. You know, I think my buddy Jacob said it best. He would rather fish rock. I would rather fish grass. And he said, you know, with rock, they're a little more predictable to know where they are. Grass, they've got a ton of spaces to hide, but again, they're ambush predators. So I would love to fish grass and I'll throw a wake bait over a glide bait any day. Again, because I can kind of see where that is and see the action of it. Glide bait, that's really, I guess the best way to put it is kind of spray and pray, really. You know, if you have no kind of electronics to actually see what your bait is doing or how the fish are reacting to it, that's the that's the best thing I can tell you there. <laughs> Need a combo for chatterbait and jerkbait. Um, oh, that's tough. I don't know that I would throw a jer uh, chatterbait on a jerkbait rod unless, you know, you want to go – right down the middle and split it with a medium heavy, you know, a seven, three to a seven, five would be good enough tip for the chatterbait to have, you know, that load on there, but not too long to where, you know, you're slapping the water with a jerk bait. Tim. Yeah, every every multi joint swim bait I have is a burner to me. The glides are a totally different game. Yep, relax, patient, retrieve. Yeah, the three D rat full size. There, George, I'm with you. I love rat eaters. I love rat eaters. I actually just caught a uh, like a one half pounder on the PB rat. I just recently got the PB rat, and I've been throwing that a lot lately. I got the uh, the three piece. PB rat and I like that a lot. It's a very different swim than the spro. You know, that multi joint, it's more of a swim, whereas the spro is kind of that true single joint, just wake, a heavy knock. I think the spro has got a louder knock than the PB rat does, but this has got a sick, slithering swim to it. I love that. I love that bait. Oh, Buzz Jet. Hella bass. I just saw Buzz Jet on there. Yeah, the Buzz Jet is, I absolutely love that. That is probably my favorite wake bait. That might be my favorite wake bait. I, I had a day that just, that absolutely killed him. Biwa Pike. Sean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that one. Let's see here. Um, thanks, Tim. Appreciate that, man. Heck yeah. And thank you, Rich, for bringing them over. Yeah, I mean, like, I will talk... I'll talk just anything fishing, but tonight was definitely just because I want to talk swim baits because, like I said, I've been getting a lot of questions on that stuff lately. And while I'm not the most knowledgeable guy, I have been able to get my own experience and then soak up a lot of knowledge from Steve and from Chris. Chris is a guy that really knows glide baits. Chris, um, that guy's knowledgeable when it comes to glide baits is – it's really, it's really up there. I mean, it's the, probably the highest of anybody that I know personally. So he's taught me a lot about the glide baits, but Steve is really the guy who got me into the big baits, into the swim baits, um, and taught me everything. Let's see here. Sean. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, Matt, right there. PB rat is definitely more of a swim bait. Yep, 
more of a swimbait versus other rats, the three piece and the four piece. The two piece I would like to get, but um it's kind of tough for me to justify the two piece BB rat when I've got the spro. Um the G rat is another one. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Ken Cannon, the G rat swimming rat. That's another wake bait, but it's a lipless wake bait. And this thing is loud. The rattles in there and the knock on this thing are insane. But that's one that I have not really... I picked it up last year and I did not put a whole lot of time into it. I put more time into that Spro rat. And I want to put more time into this rat this year. The thing is very loud and very big. But it's a sick, lipless wake bait. But yeah, talking about rat eaters. I love rat eaters. There's just something about a bass that will attack a rat and like i said even though that thing was like one and a half pounds that i caught the other night there's just something about a bass that has the gall to go and attack that kind of bait i just i love aggressive fish like that the eye wing dude all right i'm gonna show it now since socal's talking about it i didn't pick up the eye wing man i picked up the uh the gangcraft joint crawler instead of the eye wing so we're going to be taking that out pretty soon and doing a trasher pass on that guy right there. That is my first crawler as well. Very first crawler. Um, I'm excited to throw that and try and figure out crawling baits. Never done them before. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that goes. Probably not a novice with big swim baits, but I'm definitely not a pro. Yep. I'm with you there. I am with you there. Yeah, Jeremy, we are up late. Golly. Up late, but I don't work until third shift tomorrow night, so that's all good. The eye fry. Matthew said the eye fry is way better. You know, when it comes to like – the prop wake baits, I really thought that I was going to like the eye loud since we're talking about mega bass, but I, I think that the depths buzz jet is so much better than the eye loud, but there are going to be times where that eye loud is going to be better, you know, because it is a little more subtle. It's a little more quiet. The buzz jet is extremely loud and, but I mean, it gets them fired up. I love that. Yeah. That rat, that rat is so freaking loud. Um, is there a minimum size fish requirement when throwing big swim baits? No, I don't believe so. Not at all. I don't believe that there's a minimum size fish requirement. Um, just simply because I've seen and I've caught fish. I mean, I caught a fish on the timber flash that was no bigger than the timber flash, you know, and again, like, a one and a half pounder on the PB rat. I don't think so. You know, there's always that, I don't want to say misconception, but somewhat of a misconception about big baits only get big fish. No, big baits get big bites. They get big bites is what they do. Unless you're Oki and he's throwing a Spro rat and I'm talking to him. It's one of his latest videos. I'm um, sitting there talking to them and telling them, like, there's something about a rat bite. They just want to come up and just absolutely destroy it. And he caught one <laughs> that was maybe a pound on the rat that really just came up and just kind of blooped it. Didn't even try and kill it at all. May have been more of an exploratory bite. <laughs> yeah, dude, the game craft. That, that one, like, I really wanted to get the NZ crawler from depths, but a warehouse did not have the color I wanted. Um, hookup did, but I didn't want to make two orders. So I went with the game craft and the pictures of that IU just did not do it justice. Once I actually saw it in person, I was like, okay, that thing looks a lot better than the pictures do. So I am glad that I got that one. It looks really good. And there's Sean talking about the, the NZ crawler. Dude, if you do, Sean, let me know what you think about that. I had a guy that 
was supposed to swap me the shad color bull shad that I've got back there. He was supposed to swap me that for the Japanese catfish color of the NZ crawler. And I told him, I said, I'm not sending that out until I get some tracking information. And he never sent it out, never got back to me. So I consider myself lucky on that and dodging that scam. But I do want to check out the NZ crawler. So if you do get one, let me know what you think about it. Jackal Pompadour and Cicada and Mega Bass Cicada. Okay, yeah. Dude, those little cicada baits. I've been curious about those too. But again, I think it just kind of comes down to like I, I have that. I want that bigger bait now. I want the bigger bait. It may not be as many bites, but it's going to be a big bite. Um, BG fishing, how to fish the riser jack. Dude, I've only thrown it one time now. And it was one of those things I was really just kind of throwing it just to see the action of it. So I don't know much about it just yet, but I will do a trash or pass if you guys want to see that. On the riser jack, I'll take it out there and dedicate a lot of time to it and put together a trash or pass episode on the riser jack if you guys are curious about that. What's up, Dunbar? Yeah, SoCal. Exactly. Big baits get the bully bass right there. Right freaking there. The outdoorsman, any fish and talk is good. Heck yeah. Let's see here. Moderate fast action versus fast action on all around rod. Ooh. You know, like my first, my first kind of all around rod was a moderate fast. And I liked it a lot because that was one that I felt like I could really utilize a Texas rig. I could utilize it, utilize it for jigs. I could utilize it for the chatter baits. Um, I feel like I'm, like if you're going for an all around everything, I think a moderate fast depends on the rod too. But I would say moderate fast. I, me personally, my opinion, I would I would go with a moderate fast. Let's see here. Haven't used it yet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes perfect sense, Matt. Talking about that NZ crawler. Yeah. And that's the thing, man. Like, it, it was just one of those things that, like, I had to. I'm talking to Tim, you know, talking about the, the NZ crawlers, a lot of JDM colors on eBay little pricey. It was just one of those things that I had to 100% look at, you know, multiple purchases or just one. And that's why at the time I settled for the joy crawler, but I'm pretty happy that I did just from the look of it. So <laughs> turn into a size queen, bro. It's not even like, it really is true. I'm not even going to deny it. I'm not even going to deny it. Like it's, it's now, like SoCal said, big baits, bully bass. That's what it is. Um, plus, I mean, it just makes for fun fishing. Like, I could go out there with a Texas rig plastic and catch a lot of fish, I'm sure. But it's almost not as much fun for me now to catch a whole lot of fish when I would rather catch those fish that are going to blow something up or, you know, attack a big bait. Um I think it's just, it's more fun for me and my style of fishing. Like frog fishing is back and I don't care what size they are. I get freaking hyped. Um, I'm excited to show you guys the videos of going out and frog fishing and getting back on those guys. Samuel, have you ever tried fishing a big flutter spoon? No, I have not, but I do know they are extremely effective, but I have not. I, I couldn't tell you anything about those guys. Let's see here. Duo cicada. I got a large version, three inches long, four inches wide. Oh, yeah. Weighs about an ounce. That is, yeah, that is a big cicada bait. I'll have to check that out. Have I tried the bream slide yet? No, I have not. I've 
And that was really due to the fact that I was more comfortable and I'm more comfortable with the multi-jointed swim baits than I am glide baits. But now having experience, you know, with the hookup and being able to catch on a glide, I'm getting more comfortable with that and more confident to where, you know, I will go out and throw a glide more dedicated and, you know, like I said, learning that cadence of that retrieve on those. Jeremy. <laughs> Anytime I buy from overseas seller, I'll get set. Yep, exactly. That's where I'm at, Tim. Launch broadcast a country mile. You ain't lying, man. You are not lying. SoCal, dude, I, yep. Oki's got one. I think Steve's got like a couple. It sounds like a freaking... Apache coming across the water, just or more like a Blackhawk, really. Those things are so loud and they're so sick. Mud puppy musky lure caught a six and a half pound. Heck yeah. Yes, Rich, the launch frog really does launch. And I mean, that's that's the frog that I've caught them all on lately. I haven't tied on a trophy series yet this year. I've been rolling with just the sloppy toad. Launch frog. Haven't tried on haven't tied on a, a trophy just yet. So Mid South, what's up, dude? Grand Siglet. Yeah. Well, hey, if it looks good and it walks good, it's gonna get bit. So guys, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna shut it down. I'm going to go eat some dinner. I don't know what she's making. Mid-South, dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up, man? Um, but, yeah, I'm going to have to get I'm gonna have to get inside, go spend some time with the uh, with the wife. Um, SoCal, do I have the eye? Yes, I do. It's actually hidden behind this uh, dirty donkey right here. I don't have the big eye slide, though. And actually, I actually haven't thrown this guy just yet. I just recently got uh, a replacement tail for it. Oki gave me the uh, the 185 just recently, but I had to get a new tail for it. So I got a new tail for it, but I have not thrown it just yet. But kind of like I was just saying, I've gotten more confident and want to go out with glides a little bit more and put a little more dedicated time to them and, you know, figure this guy out. Like I was talking about earlier, so I don't think you were in here. I was talking about the 135, and I'm just not a fan, not a fan of the 135 whatsoever. And that's even when I got into swim baits and I felt like even when I got it, it was a little small and it just didn't feel like it had the, the right kind of action for it, which I could have been throwing it on too heavy of a rod and too heavy of a line. But, you know, the 185, I'm definitely going to be putting more time into this guy right here um, as well as that, you know, ABT dirty donkey, that kind of knockoff. I, won't, I don't want to say knockoff, but modeled after the lunker punker. And then uh, another one just recently, small, but wake bait, the depth silent killer. Finally got one of those. And I went with the 145 because that was the only one they had in the color I wanted. But killer, I mean, when it comes to wake baits, even though it's small, I know that that profile is going to be on point. Trying to get that color in the seven inch, yeah. Let's see here. All right, guys. Yep, I'm gonna have to. I see Lip Ripper, P line CXX. Yeah, that is that is my go to, my go to line for anything that is not going to be a floating style of bait. When it comes to big baits, it's gonna have to be the CXX. Wish you guys could see my table right now. I've got so many freaking baits laying on it. I'll have to come out here in the morning and clean it all up again. But let's see here. On the 135, nice. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I could have been throwing it on way too heavy of a rod and too heavy of a line, but I just did not, did not like it. Did not like it. I'll have to, I'll have to try it again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she's been cooking in there, but it smells good. And our microwave is not working right now, so I've been pretty lucky to be getting some uh, some home cooked meals. All right, guys, 
I appreciate all being in here. Um, I am going to have a video coming out very soon. I'll have a trasher pass on the contender, and then I think I'm going to jump ahead. So after the trasher pass contender, I'm going to put out the video of me and Steve fishing and give you guys just a little sneak peek of his new his new PB. I'm going to put that in there for you guys, just a little sneak peek. Like I said, if you're not subscribed to the OK Fisherman, please do so. You guys are not going to want to miss that video. Um, that was also the video or the day that I got my first glide bait fish on that Buka glide. So freaking love it. And then I will put out the video for me and my buddy Jacob. He came up from Wichita, uh, put out the video of him and I fishing. That was probably, man, that might be like three, three weeks ago now. That's how far behind I am. You guys, I, I am sorry. Um, trying to see something here. Luke asked me if I ever tried P-Line Tactical. That is what I run on all of my rods if they're not braid. Any kind of fluoro, it's P-Line Tactical. And even on like my Tatula 200 for my mid-sized swim baits, I've got 25-pound Tactical on there. I think Tactical is, my opinion, the best line. Um, the only other line that I've ever run is the Sunline Super Fluoro, and I do like that stuff too. It's uh, it's probably a little more forgiving than the Tactical as far as casting and memory, but I don't think it's as strong. But cost-wise, that's a great that's a great option. But smaller baits use twenty pound. See, you guys just keep sucking me in here. All right, guys, thank you. Appreciate y'all. If you're new here, you just subscribed. Thank you. I do appreciate that as well. And uh, again, hope you guys like the videos that are coming out pretty soon. And we are going to try and make the lives. I, I say it like every time. Like I say, I'm going to try and make them every week. We're going to shoot for every other week for now is what we're going to do. So I'll catch y'all later. Thanks again. And uh, see you next time.